this Saturday in stores. The UConn campus woke up early. There's a Saturday matinee inside Gamble Pavilion for UConn women's basketball. The Butler Bulldogs visit Connecticut for just the second time ever. It's UConn and Butler in Big East play next on SNY. And hello from courtside, everybody, with Megan Cuomo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Marino joins us shortly. So UConn comes in undefeated at home and undefeated in Big East play, despite playing through injuries and absences. Short roster again today, just seven available players. Megan, through all of the ups and downs, how are they doing this? You know what? I really don't know. When you when you think back to, okay, that COVID season a couple years ago, and they never thought they would have to endure anything like that, yeah. whoever thought that would have been easier than what they're dealing with now, all of the injuries, the number of games that various players, very significant players have missed, yet the expectations haven't changed. You know, they're supposed to win every game. They're supposed to do it in a certain way. And not only are they, uh, they missed players, Chris Daly passed out in front of them, missed a game. Gino missed a bunch of games. Yet they continue to fight. They continue to play. They continue to play well. It's astounding. And you forget that they're just kids. Well, the resiliency making this team stronger mentally for sure. Uh, Ayanna Patterson and Caroline Ducharme not available today. Concussion protocol still, and there's AZ Fudd. But available today will be non-weight bearing for at least two weeks and then be reevaluated after that. So we're looking at an extended absence for UConn's leading scorer. Our starting lineups presented by Subaru of New England on the right. The starting five for UConn, plus Inesh Betancourt and Amari DeBerry. Those are the seven available. And the starting five for Butler, including three of their key scorers who are unavailable for the UConn game at Butler January 3rd. Gino Oriama looking for career win number 1,166 today. And Austin Parkinson in his first year leading the Butler program uh, came from a 12-year very successful run across town at Horizon League School IUPUI. He wants his team to be tougher today. And he's a defensive-minded coach, right, Alan? So he wants them to compete on the defensive end. Our starting lineup is presented by Subaru of New England. So it's UConn in the home whites, Butler in their road blues. And a pretty lively crowd for noontime on a Saturday on campus. Well, I'm impressed how many students are here for a noon start. I'm not so sure when I was a student I would have showed up. <laughs> Dorothy Uhas wins the tip. Underway. Key to the last game against Butler for UConn. A crushing start to each half for the Huskies over the Bulldogs. How about that focus to get it inside to Aaliyah Edwards? Back to Juhas. Edwards. And it's good for two. And that's where she, Edwards, and her ability to knock down that foul line jumper has completely opened up this offense for UConn. Key players for Butler. Keep an eye on 14, Rachel McLemore. Only Bulldog in double figures in the game at Butler on January 3rd. into James, quickly double teamed and lost the handle on the ball. That was a good slip there by James though to get herself open. Newell pushes, finds Lopez Seneschal, quickly closed out. Juhas fights for a spot in the post, got position, got the roll. A nice quick release and Edwards wanted to give her the ball. Quick four point UConn lead. Jessica Carruthers, four, one of the three key Butler players that didn't play at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Let's that one fly over Edwards. No. Well, it was Griffin good. With the rebound. It was good recognition by Carruthers that she had 6-3 Edwards guarding her on the perimeter. Okay, Seneschal drives. Can't get the shot away. It's going to fall out of bounds and be Butler's basketball. Keys to the game today, presented by Nissan. Nika Mule has kind of been the keys driving the Yukon bus for this entire season, emotionally, physically, energetically. What a great picture. That typifies <laughs> the toughness of Nika Mule. 13 assists in that game at Seton Hall on Tuesday night. Caroline Strandy, 21 for Butler, driving. Defended by Mule and defended well. Mule got away with a foul, I thought. Lopez Seneschal underneath the Griffin couldn't handle the pass. Gotta be out of bounds off UConn. Aubrey knows she couldn't should have caught that one. She tried to shoot it before she caught it. 
Oh. In the last game at Butler, UConn outscored the Bulldogs in the paint 52 to 12. You can already see when UConn has the ball, Butler collapsing multiple players. Yeah, he's, yeah, Parkinson too good a defensive coach to just give them anything they want inside, make them beat them a different way. Macklemore kicks outside, and that's Anna Mortag who gets the tray. Oh, and Mortag missed the first matchup. They definitely could use her outside presence. Coach Parkinson very glad to have those three players missing from the prior matchup back in this one. Juhas defended by Mortag, has it knocked away, gets it to Griffin. Smart tap there by Juhas. Edwards between two players, travel. Really good defense so far by Butler, making it difficult for UConn. Very disruptive. So one point lead as uh, the Huskies have turned the ball over three times their last three trips down the court. Some of it a little bit careless. Some of it you got to give Butler credit for really good defense. Here's more tag. Knocked away. Terrific footwork there by Aaliyah Edwards. Just wisely kept that left hand outstretched against a right-handed shooter and swatted it away. No chance of a foul. So Butler will have 18 to shoot on this inbounds. Here's McLemore. Defended by Mule. Gets it inside. James with the turnaround and got it. James. The sophomore Sydney James, who had been over against UConn last season in this, gets her first points against the Huskies. But don't forget, they didn't play here. The game was canceled. Lopez Seneschal, too strong on the three. A good box out there by Mortag. But it goes out of bounds off Butler, UConn's basketball. So AZ Fudd, the latest to um, hit the injury list for UConn. You look at their offense without her and with her. Tuesday and the and the prior 19 games. But so Tuesday at Seton Hall, Husky scoring 103. The prior 19 games, 72.6. Wow. That's, that's the offense without floods, 20 points a game in it. UConn really came to play Tuesday at Seton Hall. Yes, they did. So another empty trip down the floor for the Huskies. James couldn't handle the pass in, fights to get it back. Good save, good hustle play. The Brothers kicks to the corner to Strandy, and Butler takes the lead. And they've got nothing to lose. They've got two Big East wins, and they got nothing to lose. Lopez Seneschal looking for a foul call, didn't get it. 8-0, Butler run after UConn scored the first four in the ballgame. Outside, three goes from James. You gotta love it when a kid makes a shot and then turn around and claps with a huge smile on her face. These kids are having fun out there. Let's see if UConn can get points this trip. No, as the shot is short from Juhas, might have been partially blocked. Well, she was fading away, whether it was blocked or not. Now a seven point Butler lead. McLemore over Griffin, got it. Butler just playing with so much confidence right now. And defensively making it difficult for UConn to do what they want. UConn has to be a little bit more poised. And the Butler bench is up and fired up. They are all locked in. Ready to play. And the beginnings of games is what Austin Parkinson told us has been the problem for Butler. There's Mule way off the mark. And Parkinson prides himself as a defensive coach, and their team is very prepared defensively. So a nine-point Butler lead. Here's James. McLemore steps back for the three. No. And Edwards will lose the rebound to James. Kick it over to Strandy. And that missed. Another fight for the rebound underneath. And that is going to be alternating possession arrow stays with Butler. Timeout, past halfway through quarter number one. Butler on a 13-0 run. 
after UConn scored the first four points of the game. Rachel McLemore with a couple for the Bulldogs. Good to see so many young fans here at Gamble Pavilion today for our Saturday matinee. I <laughs> <laughs> love to see it. Well, these home fans are trying to bring a little energy here after their UConn team is on the back end of a 13-0 run. Butler with the ball and a 20-second shot clock after the timeout. Shea Frederick, five into the ball game for Butler. Shot over the pass inbound over the top of James. That'll be turned over to UConn. Now, I thought UConn would step it up defensively at least with their intensity a little bit, that possession, okay, that turnover, you could have said they created it or a little bit unforced, but good defense. The question will be, how do they execute offense right now and can Butler continue to impose their will? Can they get some points here after coming up empty the last five trips down the floor? Double team on Edwards. Kick it around to Griffin. She'll take the three from the corner and get it to go. And Parkinson puts his hands up, but that's okay. I can live with that. So Aubrey Griffin breaks the dry spell. Six point Butler lead. There's McLemore driving on Mule. Good ball movement by the Bulldogs. More tag for three. No offensive rebound, though, for Strandy. She'll run into traffic. Good defense without following there by Griffin. Ten to shoot. McLemore finds space. Cut off by Juhas. There's a mismatch inside. And too strong on the shot. Mule skies for the rebound, and she will get fouled. Mule came up with it anyway. She got <laughs> in that switch on the screen on the ball. She ended up on the post player, and she comes out of nowhere. Now, see, look, she's down low. You can see her. Now, look at her boxing out. The ball comes up. She skies up to get it. The smallest one in there. That just is her toughness and her desire. All grit. The leader for UConn wearing number 10. So Huskies ball trailing by six. Same starting five on the floor for UConn. And again, just joining us, only seven available again today. I was going to say, same starting five. They don't have many other options. I know. Juhas. <laughs> <laughs> Defended by Tenley Dowell. Juhas will step back for three. No, Edwards with the offensive board. Missed the putback. A lot of bounds into the UConn's basketball. You know, a, a very errant three by Juhas, which we are not used to seeing as Oriema shakes his head. And then Edwards gets the offensive rebound, but then misses the layup. Yeah, it's not something we're used to seeing. Edwards top 11 in the nation in field goal percentage. And leading the Big East Conference. She's inside here working on James, gets fouled. And that's what has to happen. I mean, Edwards is so talented. You have to either score or get fouled. See, nice job with the hands, making herself a big target. And she went in there strong enough. There's no way James can stop her. So James with her first will go to the bench for a breather and Aaliyah Edwards steps to the free throw line. Edwards with her eighth double-double of the season Tuesday at Seton Hall 21 and 11 following Sunday uh, another double-double she has just been outstanding for the Huskies. One of two there can't chase the loose ball down. And just the effort, the defensive presence that Aaliyah Edwards has been playing with. She's been playing incredibly well on both ends of the floor. There's Carruthers. Now Juhas on Carruthers off the switch. Another miscommunication there. Juhas stuck playing the guard. And it's going to get a foul call underneath. On yeah, Nika Mule. Mule, a little bit too physical down below. -ish. There was another mismatch. You could see down here, that's where Mule is. She was trying to guard in the low post against a taller player. 6-2, Kelsey Taylor. A little too physical. So Mule with the personal foul. Here's Kendall Wingler from the corner, short. Nice rebound, Lopez Seneschal. 
Butler doing a nice job getting back, not giving him transition. Top of the key, Edwards, no. And good position for the rebound, good fight for the rebound. Jordan Melman's 23 for Butler. Eight new players on the Butler roster from a year ago, and most of them are the stars of the show for the Bulldogs. Wingler in, here's one of the transfers, Kelsey Taylor, 44. Ewell comes from behind, gets a hand on the ball. Edwards comes in and steals it. Good team defense there by UConn. Mule puts that fly too strong, right to Lopez Seneschal. She'll drop the two. You talk about missing different players. The difference that AZ Flood would make today would open up that defense that's sagging down low. For the Huskies, Butler all for their last six field goal attempts. Some of that could be attributed to the stepped-up defense by UConn. Little wake-up call in the timeout. Do you think so? Thrown away pass as Melvins was looking. And Dowell went a different way. So you see this defense here. Good team defense, three of them. Edwards straight up. Ooh. Now the left elbow went into Edwards' face, but thankfully she's kept that mask on. Her, her nose has long since healed from getting broken. It's more of a mental thing, and boy, did it come in handy today. And re-emphasized again yesterday in meeting with the media. She will wear that the rest of this season. Here's Juhas looking for space. Got it blocked. I think that was James that got all ball there. 32 back into the ball game for Butler. So UConn 15 to shoot, and uh, just over 28 seconds left to go in this opening quarter. Lopez Seneschal defended hard and well by Trinity White and missed the shot. Butler doing a phenomenal job boxing out. Final possession of the quarter will be the Bulldogs, a game that has started out as their side would have dreamt of coming into Gamble. There's Carruthers, three to shoot, throws one up off the glass, no, rebound, Juhas, and that's going to be how the first quarter expires. So UConn opens with four straight points, then Butler goes on a 13-0 run, the Huskies score the last six of the quarter. Three-point Butler lead after one. Okay, quite a selection. No shortage of picks, but as we've seen, with only a few numbers in the Raptors here, it, it's tough to get your number retired uh, at UConn. Yeah, that's the Huskies of honor. By the way, great to see the announcement that Sue Bird will have her Seattle Storm number retired. That's pretty incredible. WNBA. All right, so start the second quarter with Butler leading by three. Same five on the floor for UConn. And Butler contesting every pass and in the passing lane. Gonna be an arm bar, that'll be a Butler foul on 11 Dowells. Check in with Maria Marino. Hey, Alan. Well, Gino raised his voice in that last huddle, saying the problem is on the offensive end. When I say drive to the basket, we can't come out with zero. They're way more aggressive than we are. They're running circles around us. It's true. Defensively, Butler has dictated the pace and the tempo on this end of the floor. Okay, center shot is too strong in that shot. Yeah, and it's one and done every time. Yeah. You have to you have to give all credit to Butler for coming in here after no the way they got clobbered out at Hinkle with the energy and the effort that they have. He's already made such a difference with this program, Austin Parkinson, in his first season. Yeah. He's gonna do great things here. There's White blocked by Juhas. Mule outnumbered will slow it down. And the Huskies will run some offense here. Into the paint, Edwards steps around with the left hand. See, that's the spacing that UConn needs so they can get a one-on-one -on -one down low with Edwards. One-point game. Strandy blocked by Lopez Seneschal, then steals it right back. Heads-up play by Strandy. 
Kick it out to White and got the three. You know, and that that's apropos that she made that three because Strandy worked so hard to get the ball back. She didn't put her head down because her shot got blocked. Four point, Butler lead. Lopez Senechal, nice step to her right and a two. She is so good at scoring off the dribble, reading the defense, and making something out of nothing. And we could see that because where the play was from RC, but she saw the second the defender looked away from her, she made that step and shot. Here's Strandy. Get it back outside, Carruthers. White is going to travel. Good defense there by Lopez Seneschal. There's Austin Parkinson. You talked about uh, it being very obvious. I mean, we've met him twice. We've had, we had two meetings with him. Yeah. You can tell he has a vision and a culture that he's going to establish in this program. Well, look how much better they are today than the first time these two teams met a couple weeks ago. Nice defensive. A nice slip of the defense by Lopez Seneschal and a good assist there from Mule. From outside, more tag, no. Ball goes right. A little too quick. Yeah. Yukon, three of their last three. Tried to get it in to Yuhas. That's Juhas. a tough pass from Edwards. She, she's got to see the weak side help. Yuhas can't see it. Strandy saw it coming and made the steal. Here's Carruthers, defended by Griffin. McLemore. Carruthers, the freshman from Crown Point, Indiana. Now more tag, shot clock running out. She gets away from Yuhas, but Yuhas got back. Great job by Yuhas not leaving her feet. Griffin stops and pops. They work on that, that shoot and draw from that angle every day in practice. So a 6-0 run by UConn puts the Huskies back into the lead. Moore calling for help and finally finds it in the form of Strandy. Nine to shoot eight. Edwards defending Strandy. Is that three seconds? Yeah, three second call on Sydney James inside. It's one of my least favorite calls in the game. Unless the official did say get out of the lane, most good officials will say get out. And then if the kid remains, well, then you eventually call it. Uh, UConn uh, making a lot of shots this quarter. Wow, uh, look at the first to the second. And for Butler, they're shooting 30% in the game. Things have dropped off a little bit in this period. They start, oh, yeah, ball. they started so hot. Well, UConn did step up their pressure. Uha sets the screen for Lopez Seneschal. Tries to drive between players. Is going to draw the foul and get the bucket. About that play. Again, this kid can make something splitting the defense and then off the left foot, <laughs> falling down, getting bumped. It's pretty good upper body strength to get that ball up and in. Around and out. Yuhas will give the Huskies a second chance. Kick it to Lou on the far side for the three, around and out. And that would have been a four-point possession for Lopez Seneschal. What a pass, too, from Andre Griffin. Butler trying to stop an 8-0 UConn run. Griffin with the block, but they'll call her for a foul. Great, strong take to the basket. A little too much body yep. by Griffin. Tough take by McLemore. It's a good call. Yeah, a good, very good call. So Rachel McLemore, one of the players who followed Austin Parkinson over from IUPUI to Butler. Grad student from Zionsville, Indiana, Indianapolis suburb. And the a kid's a baller, you could just tell. Adapting to the step up in level from the Horizon League to the Big East was part of the first part of the season for McLemore. But she's done that well. She looks pretty comfortable to me. 
She's got that black sleeve on her shoulder. Having dealt with some shoulder injuries, not easy to play with. Three point Yukon lead. Yuhas for three. Yes. After going one for her prior 15 from three, Tuesday night, Yuhas four of five at Seton Hall, and the confidence is carried over. And boy, at a perfect time, they needed it. Turnover by Butler. Mule tries to push. Lots of dark blue jerseys back. Going to be a foul inside as Juhas tried to take the pass. She was held by Kelsey Taylor. That'll be the second on Taylor. So uh, this, is a, this is a game of runs for both teams. Uh, after the opening four points for UConn, Butler went on the 13-0 run, then UConn a 6-0 run to end the quarter. Now the Huskies at 11-1 run in the last three minutes here. Lopez feeds inside to Edwards. What a pass. And what position inside by Aaliyah Edwards. And a timeout, Butler. Bringing the UConn bench players up to their feet, including those who might need a little more time to get to their feet than others because of injuries. A little shaky start, but the Huskies have woken up. The matinee is alive here at Gamble. After Butler led by three at the end of one, UConn outscoring Butler 15 to four in this second quarter, resulting in that eight point Husky lead. Como's Court Vision is brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. Meg. So here we got Lou Lopez Seneschal with the taking that screen, the pass. I just like how she reads the defense. She could go back left, but just the strong dribble right and pull up. She doesn't need a lot of room to make something happen. But now Lopez Seneschal is right there guarding the ball. The kid can play some defense too. She stayed on her feet and forced the turnover there with the walk call. She's become a much better defender since she has gotten here, but the kid is willing to do anything. And, and we've talked about it a lot, a lot throughout this season. Where would this team be without her? Certainly. And uh, today the leading scorer for UConn, eight points for Lopez Seneschal, three rebounds, three assists for the grad transfer from Fairfield. So out of the timeout, see if Butler can straighten out what forced Austin Parkinson to take a minute and breathe with his team. Carruthers drives, will draw the foul and goes down awkwardly, but seems to be okay. I think on our cameraman. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Discussing Lopez Seneschal, that'll be her first foul of the day. Here's the difference in this ball game, first quarter to second quarter. In this second quarter, UConn is shooting 77% from the floor. Butler, 20%. Wow. Well, I think a couple things at play. I think the 20% by Butler, a little bit because UConn's defense has stepped up, and yet they've gotten a little bit fatigued, Butler, because on the defensive end, their defense is still really good, but it's not quite like it was because of the fatigue factor and UConn making better decisions. So Jessica Carruthers, the freshman, with the free throws. And it is a six-point UConn lead. Still no subs into the ballgame yet for UConn. Starting five, still at it. There's a nice left-hand spin again from Edwards. All day long, they can get that shot from Edwards down low. James. Looking for help. Gets it knocked in the air by Griffin. And a nice curl, but a missed pass for Melvins. And a turnover to UConn. Well, the pass inside to Edwards. See, you get her. She, I like when she starts dribbling left. She feels the defense on that high side. Just turned back. Didn't even have to go by her. She created a little bit of space with that step back. Butler seven turnovers in the ball game. UConn five. Lopez Seneschal, Griffin, Mule, three touches. Mule drives. High glass. Gets the foul. Doesn't get the basket to roll. 
But Nika Mule will shoot free throws. I like UConn spacing. I think they're doing a good job getting the ball from side to side. Can't say enough about Butler's defense and how they're making it difficult for UConn. It's gonna be the second on Sydney Jane, so she will head to the bench for Austin Parkinson and the Butler Bulldogs. Butler coming in, seven and 12 on the season, two and eight in Big East play, but a much improved team, obviously, from the team the Huskies faced January 3rd. So Nika Mule, 13 assists Tuesday night. Thir and in the last game at Butler, 13 points. Gets the free throw there to get on the board today. You all just knows that she she will give what her team needs her on any given day or night. You're defending McLemore. And it's going to be a travel by Mortag. Is that Griffin defending her there? Or is Aaliyah that Edwards? Edwards? Yeah. yeah, another great defensive possession by Edwards. Stand down, sliding her feet, always in good position. and a half minutes and counting without a field goal. And now Lopez Seneschal stepping to the free throw line for UConn as Austin Parkinson talks it over with Ashley Good. Lopez Seneschal, the Big East leader and second in the nation in three-point field goal shooting. And good on both of those. Interesting, with three minutes to play in this first half, the UConn starters are the only players who have played in this game. No subs have come in yet. Mitchell McLemore defended by Mule. Here's Carruthers, 10 to shoot for Butler. Good screen by Taylor. The shot from Carruthers is wide, though. And Mule looking for someone out ahead of the pack. Seneschal, defended well by McLemore. She'll fly in Griffin. Ten to shoot. Juhas uses her size, but missed the shot. I mean, she got banged around, but yeah, she did have three players on her. But it's definitely a shot that she can make. The rather short on that shot, and another empty possession for Butler, yes. Edwards in the pain, gonna draw the foul. And that'll be the third, I believe, on Kelsey Taylor, if it is on 44. <laughs> Gary Apple, Kara Walters, standing by in New York in our studio with all the first half highlights and analysis. The UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show is presented by Duncan. So with two minutes to go in this second quarter, the first sub of the ball game as Dorothy Juhas goes to the bench. And Amari DeBerry comes in, fresh off her terrific performance in New Jersey at Seton Hall on Tuesday. And the important thing for DeBerry is to follow up on that great performance and, and do similar things here today, build on what she did on Tuesday. Edwards with both ends with the free throws. DeBerry Tuesday night, career highs in points and rebounds. Four of her eight rebounds were offensive boards, two assists, two blocks, and only one turnover. And this uh, shorthanded Husky squad gonna need more of that. Thrown away, that'll be UConn basketball. Super important with the limited roster, as uh, Gino said yesterday, to get quality minutes out of Amari DeBerry and Inesh Betancourt and Ayanna Patterson when she's able to return. Well, some of those quality minutes have to happen now in the last three minutes of this first half with DeBerry just entered. And she doesn't have to do anything spectacular. Set good screens, play defense, and rebound. 
Sets the screen for Lopez Seneschal. The shot rattles around and goes. So already she made an impact to Barry. She set a screen, opened up, her teammate who scored. 9-0 UConn run. There is the pull up and pop missed from Strandy. Lopez Seneschal with the rebound. Good defensive retreat for Butler. She thought about it. Mule will let it fly. No. And the rebound over the head of Edwards. And it goes into the hands of Wingler for Butler. Yeah, because Wingler box, boxed out really well. Caroline Strandy. Now Wingler working on Mule. Inside of a minute to go in this first half. Shot clock at 10. From outside, Wingler. No. DeBerry and Lopez Seneschal fight for the rebound. Lopez Seneschal ended up on the floor, but appears none the worse for wear. <laughs> About a five second difference between the shot clock and game clock as uh, UConn slows it down. Lopez Seneschal between defenders mm -hmm. and all the way to the hoop. Terrific play and read there, creating that for herself. Lopez Seneschal. Wingler for three, no. Offensive rebound and putback attempt by Dowell, no. And that is how this first half is gonna come to a close. Well, after falling behind in the opening quarter, the Hussies go on a couple of runs, his latest one, an 11-0 run over the last four minutes and 20 seconds. It is Lou Lopez Seneschal with 14 and Aliyah Edwards with 11 leading the way for UConn. And Butler has three players with three, four players with three points apiece. Huskies 36-19. Hey, Gino, a little bit of a slow start. You got to be happy with the way your team played that second quarter compared to the first. Yeah, um, the first quarter, uh, you know, we missed a lot of easy layups in the beginning and wide open jump shots. And then we started to get a little um stagnant trying to force the ball into the low post you know we went we didn't couldn't generate any kind of movement but our defense stayed tough i mean uh what they scored six points in the second quarter um uh, and it was just a matter of time we were hoping that our offense could get clicking and um you know it did um you just need more out of dorka right now you know i mean she's capable of so much and you know um uh, you know, we need everybody. That's it. We can't afford to have anybody have an off day. So hopefully the second half, you know, that will change. Well, yeah, Lou stepped up 14 points, six and four. Uh, really gave you a, a nice little bump yeah. there in the, uh, late in the, in the half. Yeah, Lou knows. She's a scorer. She goes, I get the ball and I score points. <laughs> That's it. It's not pretty, that complicated, that's you know? Good. <laughs> it, you know, it ain't like French cooking. This ain't complicated. <laughs> good luck the second All right. half. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Our interview with the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriam, presented by Duncan. We'll save the French cooking for later, but we will get Mule to Lopez Seneschal for a couple. Halftime with Gary and Kara coming up. Lots of cheering still to be done here at Gamble Pavilion today as we get ready to start the second half. UConn leading Butler by 17. And courtside with Megan Kumo. I'm Alan Best with Maria Marino rejoins us shortly. Well, five players of the seven available played most of the first half. And leading the way for UConn was the grad transfer, Lou Lopez Seneschal. Seemed like she was everywhere. Yeah, and I think it was, you know, some of that experience. She was a calming force, having already played those four years at Fairfield. There's just a calmness about this young lady she did what the team needed her to do whether it's an offensive rebound and score she's so good that one dribble to the right the pull up in between defenders she reads the defense so well and back cuts and i love the way she fights in the lane she doesn't need a lot of space to get to where she wants to go the 14 points six rebounds and four assists just a, she stepped up, especially when they needed her in that second quarter. And especially interesting to me, looking at that stat line, for one of the nation's leaders in three-point field goal shooting, none of those points were from three in that first half. Yeah, because you know what? I think Butler did a good job of taking it away, but she, she, ta she took what was given to her. Now you look at uh, the first quarter versus the second for the Huskies, and uh, the shooting numbers uh, and the Bulldogs starkly different. 
UConn terrible in the first quarter, really good in the second. Butler had a great first quarter, but not so much in the second. So we start the third here at Campbell. UConn in the home whites. Lopez Seneschal will get called for a foul. Got a hand in there. Yes, yeah, she was a little grabby down there. Good call. Check with Maria Marino. Thanks, Alan. I spoke with Butler head coach Austin Parkinson. He said he didn't think his team played too badly on the defensive end in that second quarter. He said UConn, they just have studs. But their defense was hurt by their offense. So they need their offense to help. He said with UConn being limited, there's going to be switching. If you have Edwards on you, maybe drive, but not necessarily to score, just to create help. He said uh, taking step backs, that's not going to help. <laughs> and, and he's capable of some of those looks like Gino is too, when something <laughs> like that happens. Yeah, that was a turnover that they didn't, yeah, that was an unforced error that they can't afford to have happen against a team like UConn. Into Griffin. No. Got a wrong rebound. And that'll be a tied up ball. It'll stay with UConn on the alternating possession arrow. Not happy about the missed layup. So starting five on the floor for UConn. Here's Dorothy Uhas. Lopez Seneschal fumbles it, but got fouled, causing the fumble. Mark Resch and Bruce Morris talking it over whether that was a shooting foul or not. It's going to be on Anna Montag for Butler, her second. And will, in fact, be free throws for Lou. The crowd, the customary standing until you got scores. They're still up. Two foul shots. There's going to be some tired people in a minute. <laughs> oh. Now they're like, okay, can you make yes. this free throw, please? Yeah. There you go. A little confusion between they the They didn't know what to do. Should yeah. we keep clapping? Are we going to mess her up? <laughs> Should we raise our hands in the air? First points of the third quarter for UConn. Here's Trinity White for Butler. Stolen. Mule ahead of the pack. Got it. Defense to offense. Haven't seen it a ton today. Nice pick by Nika Mule. Timeout. Butler. Not liking the way this first minute and one second have gone in the third quarter. Nika Mule. End to end for UConn. Back at Gamble Pavilion, 39-19 UConn, only a 3-0 UConn run to start this third. But Nika Mule establishing her presence quickly. Well, how about the anticipation here? Nice job. Look at the left hand with the little push. But great anticipation. Nice job reaching in with that right hand, swatting it away, and then finishing at the end. Just terrific anticipation and footwork and toughness to get this team going on the defensive end. And two turnovers in two possessions, forcing the Butler timeout. So Mule back on the court with Inesh Betancourt, who makes her game debut for UConn early in this third quarter. It's Betancourt 21. Griffin Edwards, Juhas, and Mule, the other four. Ball on the floor. Wingler got it back, here's James. Good help there by Betancourt. Shot There's some mismatches. Shot clock's in single digits. Carruthers over Juhas. Missed everything. Time violation. UConn basketball. Let's check with Maria. So, Alan, that last huddle was kind of funny. <laughs> Gino signaled to Inesh to sub in. Then he looked at Lou, smiled, and said, rest fast. And then he <laughs> even started dancing in the huddle. Amari DeBerry's jaw dropped at that. So I guess you could say Gino is uh, finding the humor in this season. What <laughs> video. That's hilarious. Griffin. No. Juhas gets the rebound. Second chance points here. Opportunities for UConn. Mule gets cut off. Drives anyway. Nice kick to Juhas, but didn't see the opportunity. We'll go for it here and get it. She's trying to say she was fouled. Gino's saying the same thing. 
Or maybe that's another dance move. Three missed from Wingler. And it looked like Edwards got the rebound. After she ooh, Griffin, hard collision. And got it. Wow. What was that? <laughs> You see the contact. She gets hit, she gets bumped there by 21. How about the athleticism to get that ball up and in? Well, Aubrey Griffin showing everything that the coaching staff thought she could be when she was brought in. Of course, lost all of last season to injury. But her return after back surgery and a full season away has been spectacular this year for UConn. She just gives them such a different look. And it's gonna be off Butler, UConn basketball. Such a great defender. She can guard anybody. So physically gifted. And she's an offensive rebounder. She does just a little bit of everything. And for somebody coming off back surgery, you wonder about durability. She played 37 minutes at Seton Hall, Tuesday night, career high. And the falls that she has taken. Yeah. Edwards, no. Ball goes right to Shea Frederick for Butler. McLemore drives all the way in. She and Edwards end up in a pile on the floor. No foul call. Austin Parkinson is not happy. And I don't blame him. And They're giving him a T. He was out on the floor. But his kid was knocked down. I don't, I don't. Yes, they did team up. And he did run out on the floor to complain to the official for not calling it. I don't blame him. But he left the coaching box and he came out onto the court. So Aubrey Griffin to take the free throws for UConn. And the extended conversation continues. <laughs> and Bruce Morris, the official right there, is the one who teed him up. That's a, a picture, a picture does say a thousand words in that case, yes. <laughs> I give him credit, he's standing up for his players. He's gotta do it within the coaching box. So Lopez Senechal back into the game, Mule goes to the bench for UConn. And this third quarter has started with UConn on a 10-0 run. Edwards blocked. James got a hand on it. Edwards gets the rebound. Juhas. Oh, what a feint to the left, but the shot missed. You know, Gino alluded to it at, at halftime how Dorca has struggled. There's an example. Great move, but then just can't finish. Side. Here's James working Edwards. Fade, nice shot. Sydney James, the sophomore. Great play, stepping back. That can't be guarded. So Butler on the board in this third quarter for the first time. Three plus minutes in, they're going to call Betancourt on a travel and a turnover for UConn. That's just a, an example of Betancourt trying to do a little bit too much. Just make the simple play. Again, recapping the major storyline of the day. Just seven available players for UConn. But is that new? <laughs> and, and the importance as Edwards gets the steal. And the score. The importance of the minutes for Betancourt and DeBerry to this team going forward. Along with Ayanna Patterson, who hopefully will be back with UConn. Maybe against DePaul Monday night. If not then, hopefully soon after. And long three-pointer goes for Anna Mortag. Mortag, the junior transfer, came over to Butler from IUPUI with Coach Parkinson. Missed the first game against UConn back in Indianapolis. Griffin, nice two-stepper to the rim. Missed the shot, will get the foul. Well, Griffin trying to take it to the rim. Our take it to the rim moment brought to you by Duncan is going to be that last steal and score from Aliyah Edwards. Once again, outstanding defense by Edwards. 
And the 6-3 forward bringing it up the floor again on the break. We've seen it so many times this season. Now, Aliyah today, two shots, 13 points, four rebounds, two assists. No fouls. And uh, here's Griffin at the free throw line again. Number 44, Kelsey Taylor. Two there for Aubrey. Griffin will go to the bench and get a breather. And Nico Mule will return to the ball game for UConn. UConn's torrid starts to games have been such a tool for them in getting opponents behind early. Today it was Butler that got off to the torrid start, but UConn turned that around in the second quarter. And again, a hot start here in the third. Aliyah out there guarding a guard. Ha <laughs> ha. Blocking the shot. Showing her quickness and athleticism. How far she's come in a year's time. Continuing to have that effort and mentality to lead her team by her actions every day. Nice patience by Kelsey Taylor. And, and transfer from Trine University. And Taylor took advantage of, of Dorky Juhas being out of position. 13-7 UConn in this quarter. 49-26 is the lead. Here's Betancourt. To a wide open Juhas. And three. A two. That's a two. Set, set up as a two. Juhas, nine points now, four rebounds on the day. Foul on the floor. And that leads us to the media timeout halfway through quarter number three. 51 26, Huskies comfortably in front. Let's check with Maria. Thanks, Alan. I spoke with Lou Lopez Seneschal this morning and asked her about the load she's been carrying, both in scoring and in minutes, with the team being shorthanded so much this season. And she said she's grateful for it. She is embracing her role, but she also did point to something that Chris Daly has said throughout the season, and that's we don't have a choice. Whether you're playing 20 minutes or 40 minutes, it's about being mentally strong. And one of the main reasons that Lou came to UConn this season is so that she could play professionally. She has aspirations to do that and all of this experience could help reach that level but Alan for now she just wants to win and has been everything this team has needed her to be and everything that she's needed to do for herself to showcase that talent to the world I think that's gonna be a foul on Aaliyah Edwards uh, Amari DeBerry back into the ball game and Esh Betancourt who got the prior foul has gone to the bench along with Dorka Juhas so it's Edwards Mule Lopez Seneschal DeBerry and Griffin on the floor for UConn Melman's too strong. And Griffin with the rebound. And avoids the uh, crossfire. Four to go, third quarter here at Campbell Pavilion today. UConn looking to remain unbeaten in Big East play. Here's Aaliyah Edwards. Draws contact. Aggressive take from Edwards from the top of the key. I thought she got an extra step in there. They were big steps. They were. Nice long legs. Good foul. I think there was a step in there before she took the last two. Called Kelsey Taylor for the foul. Who goes to the bench with her third. Leah Edwards just continuing to do great things for this UConn team. And keyword consistently. Yeah, she has been money all season long. Game after game, both ends of the floor. And now up to 15 points in this one. Shea Frederick. A three for Frederick. Her first points of the ball game. Fifty-three, twenty-nine. UConn. Here's Edwards with the ball beyond the arc. DeBerry. Oh, 
tend to shoot. Edwards, patience, and a bucket. What a look and a find by Lopez Seneschal. Dorothy Uhas back up to check back into the ball game for UConn. Here's Rachel McLemore, cut off by DeBerry, then finds a step. Frederick on Mule. Smart defense there by DeBerry. There's James who couldn't get to the bucket. Here's Griffin at the other end, gets it. Floating through the air. It's like a second and a half on the clock to go from end to end for Griffin. Okay, I exaggerate a little. Inside of two and a half to go. Here's Tenley Dowell, runs into Amari DeBerry, loses the ball out of bounds. Austin Parkinson, whoops. I have a nice pass there from Edwards, and how about that finish? Okay, was that what, three seconds from end <laughs> It wasn't much. No, it was very nice. Aubrey Griffin today, 13 points, four of six from the floor, four of five from the free throw line, five rebounds for Griffin. Aliyah Edwards goes to the bench for a breather. Dorothy Juhas with the basketball and the double team. DeBerry underneath, got it blocked. Good help defense there by Butler. From outside, Mortag missed, good rebound for Lopez Seneschal. Rebounds today, UConn out rebounding Butler 27 to 20. As we come down to a minute and a half to go in this third quarter. Try to get it into Juhas, knocked out of bounds by Mortag. Connecticut basketball, nine to shoot. And Gina was pointing over to Aubrey Griffin, who was wide open on the other wing. And maybe then she can either shoot it or then dump it into Juhas down low. Lopez Seneschal got it. Seven of 12 from the floor today for Lou. Good denial there by Mule. The very on Frederick. They get the ball inside to James. Defended by Griffin. They'll call Griffin for the arm bar. And she's a little bewildered by that, but I think that was <laughs> Aren't they a all? Good call. <laughs> Every kid is bewildered when a foul is called on them. Yep. Coach uh, demonstrating, hey, you can't do this. McLemore over Mule for three. No. Long rebound. Griffin got it and gets tied up. No, nope, got fouled. Gonna call Mortag? Yes. That's going to be her fourth. Welcome to Gamble Pavilion, coach. <laughs> Just the second ever trip by Butler to Gamble. They played two years ago. Did not play last year. The Bulldogs had some travel troubles then and just didn't make it in time for the game. And they certainly acquitted themselves well to start this one, but the Huskies have gone on a tear. Next up. Here at Gamble Pavilion is DePaul here on SNY Monday night. Remember, that's the rescheduled game. Anissa Morrow leading the way for the Blue Demons. We start with the pregame show at 6.30 on SNY Monday night. And that will be a fascinating matchup in the paint for sure. So, a uh, quick timeout here with a minute two to go in quarter number three. And the Huskies on an 8-0 run. Huskies by 32 with a minute to go in the third here at Gamble. Talked about that uh, DePaul visit to town on Monday night. And Anissa Morrow, one of the star players in Big East women's basketball. What a challenge she'll be for UConn's bigs. I mean, she is big and strong and physical. She's added a three-point shot to her repertoire. She's going to be an incredible matchup for Aaliyah Edwards and Dorky Juhas and the other post players. And it'll be a really good kind of precursor to the South Carolina contest and Tennessee yeah, as well. For sure. 
So that's Monday night here at Gamble Pavilion. And again, SNY with the coverage for you with the pregame starting at 6.30. And remember, this was a game that was supposed to be played a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah. But due to UConn not having seven healthy scholarship players, they postponed it. And then Monday was the date that they came up with. So Lopez Seneschal and Mule on the bench. It's Griffin, Edwards, Juhas, DeBerry, and Betancourt, the five on the floor for UConn. And you saw on the bench there Lopez Seneschal eating something. You know, that's what kids, to, you know, what they do today, the science that they, they have, especially for all the minutes that they're playing, get some food during the game to replenish their bodies. Getting a head start on uh, drawing some things up, maybe two for the fourth quarter, or is this just a conversation? Always teaching, always, always teachable moments. Foul on Bettencourt, so here's Rachel McLemore shooting free throws for Butler. The grad transfer from Zionsville. It's the only player to score in double figures when the Huskies vi visited Hinkle Fieldhouse back in January 3rd. One of two there for Butler. McLemore very quiet today, just one of six from the floor. And four points for the leading scorer for the Bulldogs. Juhas directing traffic. Mr. Berry, Bettencourt, defended by Frederick. Off the screen from Juhas, goes all the way to the rim, had no place to go. Little extra step. She went just a little too far, good move. A little too far. That shot missed everything, Edwards will reel it in. 19, 18 and counting to go in this third quarter here at Gamble. Before a good crowd for a Saturday early matinee, as UConn tries to remain undefeated in Big East play. Who gets the final shot? Gino calling out signals, Juhas. Off to DeBerry screen, DeBerry didn't roll. As Juhas thought she might, and that is how quarter number three is gonna end. UConn outscoring Butler 25-11 in the quarter. Butler over their last five field goals. And after three, it's UConn by 31. As we get ready for the fourth quarter, our game reset is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Lou Lopez Seneschal leading the way offensively for UConn today, along with Thalia Edwards and Aubrey Griffin, holding Butler's leading scorer, Rachel McLemore, to just four points. And you see the points or turnovers in that lower left, heavily in favor of the home side. All right, we've been genuinely curious to see your opinion on this. Our UConn Fan Choice Poll presented by Duncan. We asked you today who should be the next former Husky to have their number retired. You said, is it fair to call out a landslide? Overwhelmingly, 61 yeah. 61% to 32%. Sue Bird. Wow, I mean, incredible highlights. Incredible young lady. Well, she's a, a woman now, but she's so much younger than me. She'll always be a little <laughs> Susie Q to me. An amazing career and an amazing impact on the game. We have a, a puppeteer. A puppet version of Jonathan. Very nice. We're thinking of our boy Jonathan. We hope he's okay. We're going to get a little surgery. Barry Edwards, Bettencourt, Griffin, and Juhas, the five on the floor for UConn. Shot clock at 10 here for Butler. There's Kendall Wingler. And Jessica Carruthers, turnaround, desperation, heave. This is and Edwards with nice uh, position for the rebound. Terrific defensive set for UConn there. Dorka Juhas just kept on curling. Outstanding curl and a terrific pass. Juhas into double figures. Tenley Dowell got away from the Husky defense and gets the bucket for Butler. Well, Edwards' kid scored, but DeBerry's kid set the screen, and I don't know if DeBerry told Edwards that the screen was coming. So either if you don't tell her, you got to switch. Griffin with the kick, and a foul is going to be called underneath, and the Juhas uh, three-pointer sticks. Literally, sticks. 
Yeah, back in the day, we'd have to go get a broom handle <laughs> to get that, but Amari DeBerry just easily jumped up and knocked it out. Quite capable. So they'll call that foul on Caroline Strandy, her third. UConn with about the 22 to shoot. Barry and Betancourt haven't scored yet today. There's to Barry with the ball. Shot clock at 10. Betancourt into Edwards. Double team comes. Shot clock running out. Juhas tries to draw the foul. They won't get the shot away. Time violation, UConn. He said, Gino's saying, keep the ball moving and keep cutting. You know, Edwards, she tried to, to get rid of the ball, but three blue jerseys converged. You got to get the ball out of your hands to an open player. James now with the ball, defended by DeBerry. Court stepped away for the double team, left to play wide open, but the shot was missed, and that is going to be out of bounds and be UConn basketball. Edwards ended up on the floor, but got up okay. Betancourt lucky that her kid did not make that shot. I don't know why she left and ran away the way she did. And her look, the look on her face right? said, I should not have left. <laughs> she was kind of yelling as she turned away and like, said, well, ah. yeah, Why did I do that? <laughs> Good to see Adesh on the floor. She was ill the last couple of days. Got back to practice yesterday. Edwards drives, feeds Juhas. Now Griffin for three. No. DeBerry with a rebound. Edwards. No. Shooting got a little cold here in this fourth quarter to start for UConn. Carruthers, Jessica Carruthers with the freshman. Unconventional form, but makes it from three-point range. So these are the minutes. A lack of a flow offensively and a lack of movement. Carruthers with the steal and score for Butler. These are the minutes with both DeBerry and Bencourt in the ball game that Gino talked about being very important for the team yesterday. How with the short roster, needing to get quality minutes with these players on the floor. Have the luxury of a big lead to try and do so, but... You gotta keep executing. Bencourt. No. And the rebound goes to McLemore for... It. No, that was Wingo. And Juha sees the pass coming. A heads up play there by D Dorka Juhas to step in and steal that outlet pass. Shut down a 7 0 Butler run. Brothers again, that shot that turned away from the corner. Dowell, no. And Betancourt with the rebound for UConn. Ahead to Griffin. Left hand layup. More of Griffin's athleticism on display. Timeout, Butler. Butler had to stop some bleeding. UConn going on a little bit of run here. How about this great passing? Nice cut from Juhas. UConn in control late. Thirty-point UConn lead. A lot of families here for the matinee at Gamble Pavilion today, and watching uh, a slow start, but a great finish for UConn. Aubrey Griffin, one of the leaders for the Huskies today. Well, she has had a real sneaky afternoon there. Her lone three of the game, but you know her athleticism is just so fun to watch. The nice pull-up jumper on the break. How she can finish in traffic has been incredible all season long. A nice pass here from. Aaliyah Edwards, the gorgeous finish on the break. 17 points, six rebounds, and outstanding defense as well. And I don't know if we've even talked about this at all in any of our broadcasts, but one of the things that Griffin and Aaliyah Edwards are really doing well for UConn, getting to the free throw line by their aggressive takes in the lane, and then making the free throws. 
Well, that's the key. You know, it, it's it's terrific to get to the line. Great, the, the best players get themselves to the free throw line, but you gotta knock them down. Six of seven from the free throw line today is Griffin. Leah Edwards, five of six. Edwards on the bench right now. Five to shoot for Butler. More tag, blocked. Great D by Juhas. You see her teammates love it. She's trying to not smile, but she can't help it. Why not? Really good footwork. Look at the body control. Just puts her hands up <laughs> and swats it. Looks like a volleyball player. That's got to feel good. <laughs> Time violation. Turnover <laughs> by Butler. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> DeBerry loves it as well. Seven blocks today for the Huskies. Let's see if you can, UConn can get some better movement. There you go. Well, I'm gonna throw it out of bounds. I think you're going this way, but you went that way and um, and a turnover. Well, of the 67 points today, that is uh, the double figure scores for UConn. Spreading it around nicely. Gino talked about needing everyone. Everyone contributing. Kickball off to Barry's foot. Butler basketball, 20 to shoot. Butler over their last four trips down the floor. Austin Parkinson's team actually led after the first quarter of this one. But since then, UConn outscored him by 20 in the second, 14 in the third. There's another steal. And another score for Nika Muir. Pick in the pocket once again. Lack of communication defensively. There's someone open for Butler. You can see Mules in there in the middle of the lane, not guarding anybody. Offensive foul called on Taylor as she tried to make some space for herself. So DeBerry's got her arm on her. She started to turn, and that right shoulder, she led with that right arm, the right elbow, rather. Called for the offensive. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Here's Gamble. Griffith. Travel. Had a little trouble when she went to pick up her dribble handle in the ball. Yeah, and shuffled her feet a bit. Yeah, UConn turnover on that one. Huskies on a 6-0 run, though, over the last couple of minutes. And it's been three minutes since the ball has gone through the basket for the Bulldogs. There's more tag defended by DeBerry. Shot from the corner by Melman's missed, and UConn with the rebound. Butler shooting just 26% from the floor today. Their season average is 43. Betancourt, no. Griffin couldn't pull the rebound in. Nice save inbounds there by Melman's for Butler. More tag. Griffin almost stole that away from Wingo. to post again to Berry. Nice double. Block and a steal. What a double by Dorka Juhas. Rosemary Dumont had it taken away. Juhas runs into traffic, a hard foul. Everybody up and everybody okay. There's always a, a pause in the arena when somebody falls. <laughs> nice read by Juhas, and Dumont just didn't get there in time. After what this team has been through and all of the people on the injury yeah, list. Yeah, you don't want to join that group over there. Everybody takes a deep breath when one of the Huskies hits the floor. In fact, referees were hanging around Dorka Juhas for a minute, who's holding her right leg, standing at the free throw line, but she gave them the thumbs up. Oh, Aaliyah Edwards is up and ready to check back in. 
Yeah, you'd like to say Aaliyah Edwards can stay out and rest up, but no, sorry, you've got to come back in. What a two there for you, Haas, and she will exit the ball game with less than three minutes to go. 13 points, 14 points, check that, 6 of 11 today. For Dorka Juhas, who, remember, had kind of a cold first half and came alive in the second where the score sheet is concerned. Dowell gets loose underneath and gets the bucket for Butler. Good no-foul decision there by Edwards. So stops a 7-0 UConn run with that Butler basket. Griffin ended up on the floor. She's up and okay. Betancourt looking to make some space, gets it to Mule, that's a three, and it goes around and down. <laughs> Dancing yet again. <laughs> Betancourt with some tricky dribble. Getting her coach to dance on the sidelines. Too fun. That shot from Frederick doesn't go. The rebound ends up in the hands of Griffin. Inside two to go, Edwards. Two defenders on her, that's gonna be a tied up basketball. And that will stay with UConn on the alternating possession arrow. All right, now you gotta do something special to get the coach to dance, right? Sure, now this one rattled in. And then how about that? <laughs> Morgan. It's a Morgan saying stop, Morgan, stop. Morgan Valley just shook her head like, come on man, uh, we don't wanna see that. Edwards will draw contact and get the bucket. Wow, a little NBA continuation, huh? <laughs> so the nice take, gosh. You know, she, her game just keeps expanding and expanding, dribbling from the top of the key through traffic, getting fouled, getting to the line. And another 20-point game for Aaliyah Edwards. That's Frederick for three, no. Rebound to Berry. Well, UConn could run its record to 17 and 2 on the season, remain undefeated and in first place in the Big East at 10 and 0, and remain undefeated at home this year. DeBerry got the three. Gets the bench up and loving it. She's trying to not smile. <laughs> Get some good appreciation from the fans, too. Gary Apple, Carol Walters coming up with a full recap of today's game. Plus, you'll hear Gino Oriema's post-game news conference on the UConn Women's Basketball Post-Game Show, presented by your local New England Honda dealers right after the game. Half a minute to go. Two to shoot. One to shoot. Got it away and went, but they're going to stop and make sure that Shea Frederick got that shot off in time. 21.3 to go. And for UConn, I guess we can begin to look ahead now. Uh, did, did they did first? Did she get the shot away in time? I uh, don't close. think so. No. I don't think so. When the light goes on, was the ball still in her hands? Yeah, they waved it off. I'm glad they didn't take a lot of time because yeah. you know it's 21 seconds to go in the 40-point yeah. game. Yes. So Butler will go to 7-13 and 13 in the season, 2-9 and nine in Big East play. Butler flew in here yesterday on a charter they shared with their men's basketball team. UConn men and the Butler men play tomorrow downtown at the XL Center. And the Gamble crowd comes to their feet to salute their Huskies, who have protected the home floor once again. And I know Gina said to him, you guys are a heck of a lot better than the first time we saw you.
Your final from Gamble. UConn for a 79. Butler 39, a 40 point margin of victory. And our player of the game presented by CSCU. A little bit of a tough choice today because uh, the, the score sheet really spread around for UConn, but we chose Aliyah Edwards. We see Aliyah with uh, another 20 point game to go with seven boards, four assists. And yeah, uh, she was everywhere. Three blocks and two steals. And another great game all around for the junior, Aliyah Edwards. So DePaul coming to town on Monday night. Next up for UConn. But once again, with a, a short bench and just seven available players, uh, the Husky squad manages to find a way to, to get it done, even after a tough start to the game that saw them actually trail after the first quarter. Maria Marino is with Gino. Coach, once again, you make the most of what you have. Is that why you're dancing on the sidelines? <laughs> I'm dancing because Nika made a three. She's been, uh, you know, she's been working so hard on, uh, you know, on her outside shooting that I, I wanted her to make a couple in the second half. Uh, but I, I, I think the, the thing I'm most happy about is the last couple of games now, everyone that's been on the floor has made a significant contribution, you know? And that's the way we have to go about this, you know? We have, uh, we probably have the, as good a team as there is in the country sitting on the bench. So this is what we have. So we just got to get the most out of everybody. I know you also love when defense leads to offense. There were so many steals and scores today. How happy were you seeing that defensive effort? Yeah, we, we thought we'd be able to, to, to disrupt them a little bit and we wanted we wanted to be disruptive and uh, you know you got to take you got to take chances against Butler because they run their offense so well you know Austin they they're really hard to play they're really well coached and uh, if you make a mistake they end up getting a layup or an open three so we made really good decisions we took good risks and um, that's what happens that's well, you got to Paul up next. What kind of challenge will they bring? Oh my God, they they got a big kid inside who could probably get 50 if we don't if we don't do a good job, Gardner, and she could probably get 30 if we do a great job, Gardner. So uh, we're going to have our hands full with with her, and uh, it's still DePaul. You know, they play with a little bit of an edge, and. Um, you know, we're playing today. We're playing Monday, so we gotta we gotta get our energy and we gotta come back. It's not gonna be easy. If the Eagles win tonight, will you be dancing and can you give us a preview? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think I'll be dancing if the Eagles win today. I mean, um, um, I hate to say this, but I really respect the Giants and the job Brian has done. Uh, I'll be happy that the Eagles won, but it's only it's only the beginning of the playoffs for them. Uh, there'll be plenty of dancing when they're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Gino. All right. The Hall of Famer, Gino Auriemma, Philadelphia native who will definitely be pulling for one side of that game later on tonight, for sure. UConn by 40 over Butler, and Coach danced after Nika made a three. Yes! <laughs>